I changed. I changed when I remembered my first abuser's face. I thought to myself, you're seeing things. This must not be real. No, uh-uh, no, I don't want to look at that. This feeling is not true. I love my boyfriend, but how come when we make love, I am afraid for my life and I see somebody else's face? This led me to live my life with a gaping pit of shame, disgust, guilt, and confusion. All from the perspective of being six years old again. 60% of sexual abuse victims are under the age of 17. Out of every 100 sexual assaults, six are reported to the police in Canada. I was launched into fight or flight mode. The gaping pit grew, and so did my addictions, night terrors, sleepless nights, flashbacks, confused and disillusioned behavior. I was doing everything I possibly could not to look at what was really going on inside of me. I was in shock, reliving being afraid for my life and those I love, feeling what I have felt my whole entire life, but hadn't been too afraid to see it. I had been protecting myself from it from such a young age. One in four girls and women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime. One in six boys and men will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime. 60% of Aboriginal women will be sexually assaulted in their lifetime. 83% of disabled women will be affected by sexual abuse in their lifetime. I was given some shocking and disturbing information on a crime my sibling committed. All of a sudden, I was reliving my life from ages 8 to 12, flooded with scenarios and images from my second abuser. He was the man who gave life to me. Eighty percent of sexual assault happens in the home. I finally called for help. I arrived at my counselor's office, not knowing how to deal with what I was seeing, afraid for my life, afraid of taking my own life. Afraid of potential actions, still disillusioned, still thinking, this must not be true. Make it stop, now. She gave me the definition of what a flashback really is, and that they are, in fact, memories. This confirmed to me what I was reliving in my head and seeing unwillingly was true. The voice that I had been struggling to find for so long had been freed. That day, my recovery finally began. Today I will leave you with these words. You may never be the same again, and that's okay. And just because it was taken from you does not mean it's theirs to have. You are worthy and you are not alone. You are not alone. It's not my fault.
I would like to welcome you into a moment of silence for those who did not make it through their struggle, for our missing and murdered Aboriginal women, for our missing and murdered people involved in the human and sex trade, for our missing and murdered people in our LGBTQ communities, and for those who are still working on finding their voice.